Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mathematics 10 class for this school year 2020-2021. We are your teachers, Ma'am Christy Rose R. Nicolas and Ma'am Maria Carmela D. Laudit. For our first quarter topic in Module 1, Lesson 1, we will learn about patterns, or known to be sequences, and relationships. Before that, how are you, my dear students? We hope you are safe and healthy, especially during this time of pandemic. So the first thing that we need to know is generate patterns. That is our target skill for today. Specifically, in lesson one, we need to define sequence, finite and infinite sequences, Illustrate the relationship of a sequence using an object. Determine the next term in a given sequence. We are looking forward that we will master these skills at the end of this module. To measure what you currently know about our lesson for today, kindly answer the pretest under what I know in module 1 specifically on pages one and two. For those students who have a copy of the module, kindly write your answers in one whole sheet of paper, write your name, grade and section, title of the activity and the date, like what we've illustrated on the screen. For students who can access the e-learning platform and or Google Classroom, the link for the pretest in What I Know will be posted. We hope that the What I Know will be answered for at most 10 minutes. Congratulations! No matter what your score is, your effort is highly appreciated. Keep on trying! Let us practice our minds. We highly encourage you to do the following task for a deeper exploration on the topic. What's in on page three? What's new on page four? And what is it on page four? Can you do the following task? On those tasks, you will learn that the patterns formed are also known as sequence. Unknowingly, sequence can be seen in our house. On the first picture, we notice the arrangement of clothes is according to its color. Even in calendars, the number of days and even the months are arranged. How we cook? Ano ang dapat mauna kapag nagigisa? Bawang o sibuyas? Or even how we arrange our dishes or our tools in the kitchen. Sequence can also be observed in our community. Once we go out and observe the Sari Sari store, all items were organized according to its category. On our school, all the classroom numbers are arranged. And even on God's creation, there is a sequence. So with that, mathematics is really part of our lives. Mathematically speaking, what is sequence? Sequence is a function whose domain is the set of consecutive positive integers. Again, sequence is a function whose domain is the set of consecutive positive integers. Let us unlock some terms. The first one is a function. We've learned that during our grade 8, but for this year, that pertains to a fixed rule. The next one is the domain. It means the values of n or the terms. And the last one, the positive integers. In our grade 7 lesson, it pertains to the numbers that start from 1, 2, 3, and so on. I hope this helps you a lot. 
Let's try another definition. Sequence, also known as progression, is a succession of numbers arranged in a definite order such that each number is derived from the preceding numbers according to a fixed rule. Why is it progression? Because it is continuous. There is a succession wherein there is an arrangement of proper order. It follows a specific order or arrangement. And lastly, like what I told to you, there is a fixed rule known to be the function. With that, let's have keywords for us to remember sequence. Again, sequence pertain to pattern, order, fixed rule, and function. Let's have our first example. 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. This is a numbered sequence because it has a pattern. Can you identify what pattern does it show? Kindly think of it. Good job! The pattern is commonly known as multiples of 3. In other words, from the first term 3, we continuously add 3 on the preceding term. Or during our elementary days, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and so on. Let's have another one. Negative 1, 1, 3, 7, and 11. Is it a sequence? Very good! It is not a sequence because there is no pattern or fixed rule. Let's try! Which of the following is a sequence or not? Let's use the following symbols. For the first item, 0, 4, 8, and 12. Second, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. And the last item, 1, 2, 5, and 12. Again, kindly think the way it is being arranged. Is there a pattern behind these numbers? Okay, let us now know the answers. For the first item, 0, 4, 8, and 12. Do you think it is a sequence? Very good. That is a sequence. The pattern is it adds 4. Second item, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. On the first glance, it seems to be not a sequence. But it is a sequence because we continuously multiply negative 1. On the third item, 1, 2, 5, and 12. Very good. That is not a sequence. That is just a set of numbers. Good job, my dear students. Let us go back to this example. 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. Since it is known as multiples of 3, we could rewrite it in symbols as f of x is equal to 3x. f of x is known to be the symbol for function, which is related or part of the term or definition of a sequence. In sequence, instead of writing f of x is equal to 3x, we could rewrite it as a sub n is equal to 3n. f of x here will now be a sub n in a symbol of sequence. And the x here will now be replaced as n. So take note of that. a sub n is equal to 3n. The whole part of it is now pertaining to the fixed rule or the general rule of a sequence. And the n here pertains to the n term. 
These set of numbers are what we call terms of a sequence. Specifically, it has a symbol. 3 will be a sub 1 pertaining to first term. 6 will become a sub 2, that is the second term. 9 will be symbolized as a sub 3 or the third term. 12, a sub 4 as fourth term. 15, a sub 5 as fifth term. As the pattern continues, the general symbol is a sub n, which is pertaining to the nth term. I hope that is very clear with you. Look at the values of n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Going back to our definition of our sequence, the domain should be positive integers. I hope everything is clear with you. Let's proceed. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 again. 3 now is the first term. a sub n is equal to 3 n. That is the fixed rule. If we will replace n as 1, which means first term, n is equal to 1, we will, replace, uh, we will now simplify it as 3 times 1, so that is 3. So that is very clear that the first term is 3. Let's have another one. How about 12? That is the fourth term. So what do you think will be the value of n? Okay, so n now will become 4 which means fourth term. If we're going to substitute it on our general rule or the fixed rule, which is 3n, 3 times 4 is 12, which is very evident that that is the fourth term. Sequence can also be classified into two, finite or infinite. Again, finite or infinite. Can you think of it, even in our layman's term, what do you think is the definition of finite or infinite? Or we may use these examples to help us. Can you look at the finite sequence and the column for the infinite sequence? Can you observe the numbers and the symbols? Do you have any idea? Okay, as you can notice, the finite sequence has first and last terms, which means it has an end. But on the infinite sequence, it has no last term. The very end symbol of it is an ellipsis, which means the pattern continues. It has no end. So I hope this is clear with you. After knowing what a sequence is, let us now learn how to find the next terms. Again, knowing the pattern in a sequence is important. In finding the next terms, 3, 6, 9, 12, we have two missing numbers. We need to find the pattern, like what we're talking about. We continuously add 3 on the preceding term. Now, what is the preceding term? So, the preceding term of the first blank is 12. So, we need to add 3. So, that is 12 plus 3, where in 12 again is the preceding term. The answer is 15. For the next missing number, 15 will become the preceding term. Add again 3 because that is the pattern. So the answer here is 18. So that's how we find the next term. So we need to look for the pattern. Let's try another one. Find the next terms of 5, 10, 20, and we have two blanks. What do you think is the pattern? Are we going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Okay, good job. The pattern here is 
we need to multiply 2 on the preceding term. So the preceding term is 20. We're going to multiply 2. So the answer is 40. For the next missing term, we continuously add 2 or rather multiply 2. So that is 40 times 2. That is 80. Okay, again, we need to look for the pattern before we proceed on finding the next terms. It seems that you can now do it on your own. With that, kindly accomplish the following tasks. So we have four things that we need to accomplish. The first one is what's more on page six. What I have learned on page seven. What I can do on the same page and the assessment on page 8. For those students who have a copy of the module, kindly write your answers in one whole sheet of paper. Write your name, grade and section, title of the activity, and the date. You may submit your outputs online if possible, or let your parent or guardian bring this in school. For students who can access the e-learning platform and or Google Classroom, you may accomplish your task in your notebook, take a picture of it, and send it in the e-learning platform repository. With that, if you have questions or needs assistance, don't hesitate to communicate with us. Thank you so much and have a nice day.